Americans and one after it, changing ones, third and fourth genders in Native North America. By then, I had gone back to graduate school and received my PhD in History of Consciousness from UC Santa Cruz. But Harry's research and his constant dialogue continued to spur me. Harry had drawn my attention to non-Western patterns of homosexuality and to the voices of indigenous and people of color not being included in LGBT studies. That led me to work on two other projects, Stephen Murray's Islamic Homosexualities and Boy Wives and Female Husbands Studies in African Homosexualities, works that still stand as rather lonely hilltops on a barren plain. And like Harry, I found that my scholarly interests led to indeed demanded activism. For nearly 10 years, I worked with the Bear American Indians organization in San Francisco, learning how to make fry bread, attending powwows and memorials for the many members lost to AIDS, and laughing until my side hurts at stories told late the night about that crazy trickster, the white man. In 1995, I published Queer Spirits, a collection of myths and folklore with an exploration of gay psychological archetypes. Both Harry and John made many contributions to that project. My last book, Jesus in the Shamanic Tradition of Same-Sex Love, is the most deeply influenced by Harry and the most like him, that is to say, over-the-top, speculative, and quixotic. <laughs> <laughs> I try to carry for not only Harry's thinking about subject-subject consciousness, but what I learned in the course of the HIV epidemic. It's been several years now since my travels with Harry, John, and Brad came to an end. Brad succumbed to AIDS in 1996. Harry and John are gone. Tonight I stand here not as a scholar or writer, but as a witness. A witness to two epic events in LGBT history, which is my job to remember. The epidemic and Harry Hay. As Bradley wrote in, the, in his journal the day, days before he died, what I like, what I'm drawn to, the intense, fascinating glamour of the world is its totality, light and dark, life and death, pain and pleasure. Well, it's my great pleasure and honor to be your witness tonight for the happiest part of my life, my adventures with Harry Hay. <clears throat> On August 10, 1948, Harry Hay wrote a prospectus that anticipated the goals, forms, and institutions of today's international, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender movement to an extent that was truly prophetic. And for six decades, <clears throat> he brooded over this new movement as it sputtered to life, Chal um, nudging it to its feet in the 1950s, stealing its resolve in the 1960s, challenging it to claim its rightful place among the great causes of our time, until 2002, when still grumbling and grousing, Still issuing alarms and calls, his brow furrowed at the horizon, he passed. He was 90. Up close, Harry's life is trees swaying in a turbulent wind, but from the ridges above it is a forest rich and verdant. Creating a movement to secure the human dignity of sexual minorities was his vision. <clears throat> Finding a manic brotherhood of gay comrades in which to live and learn, which he first imagined as a young man working shoulder to shoulder with wobblies in the fields of Nevada, was his dream, and he realized both. Harry died in the arms of his beloved radical fairies with the love of his life, John Burnside, by his side. These two boys, for nearly four decades, were together clinging, never leaving, excursion-making, fulfilling their foray, and walking into the gate. 